Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with Slovakia. Woo! Awesome country, I'm assuming. Uh, so, yes, Slovakia, former uh, you know Soviet Union, right? So, uh, this will definitely be interesting and cool. So, let's check it out, guys, and see what they have to offer. Before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I really appreciate it. And let's jump into this. Dun, dun, dun. And do eventually, yes. Nice shirt, Paul. Yes, we're, ma we're matching. We got matching shirts. Woohoo! And matching shirts, matching names. You know, it's awesome. Paul and Paul. Hey, everybody. We are back to Geography now. Good to see you again. So this episode, Slovakia. All right, for the 18th time on this channel, in the Slavic world, you have the Eastern Slavs. No. Don't just sit, come, just sit, come on, no. man. The Balkan Slavs. <laughs> and then you have the Central Slavs. Come play with us, Poland. Day okay. And within Central Slavs, you have Slovakia, the youngest sibling, who's like, Hey, guys, guys, hey, guys, I, I have an automotive industry. Come on, you like cars? What about mountains? You like skiing? Yeah, Slovakia. It's like the Jan of Europe, if any you guys know that reference. By the way, guys, this is Terry. He's going to be in the Solomon Islands episode. He's just uh, here for the moment, so yeah, say hi, Terry. Hi. Anyway, cue the new <laughs> intro! New intro? It's time to learn geography. No! Hey, everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Slovakia! Cool. Not Slovenia. That's the next episode. They're sick and tired of being confused with each other. They literally even have a monthly meetup between embassies to exchange mistakenly addressed mail. To make things even more confusing, they're both Slavic countries. Their flags are similar. They both had a history of dramatic communism years. And even their names and languages have the same prefix of Sloven. Nonetheless, Slovakia. Well, all these flags are very similar, you know? Not saying it in a bad way. Just saying. Before we start, just want to introduce someone who will be helping me throughout this episode. One of Slovakia's top YouTubers, <laughs> PP Peter. Hey guys, Woo. thanks for having me, Barbs. Huge fan of the show. I was born and raised in Slovakia. I lived there for 18 years, so I hope I can be of some help. Thanks, Peter man. And he hua. Let's look at the globe, shall we? Cue new transitions. <laughs> Slovakia. We just kind of slipped out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and peacefully exited Czechoslovakia. We kind of do that. We slip out of places. Yeah, you guys are kind of slippery. Also, if you look at the shape of the country, it kind of looks like an elephant head with a really fat trunk. In any case, here's the globe. First of all, Slovakia is landlocked, located in the region of Central Europe, bordering five other countries. So central that some claim that the village of Kremnitske Bane is the geographic center of Europe. But like a ton of other countries claim that too, so good luck. Anyway, the country is divided into eight kraje, or regions, each of which is named after the principal city that lies in it, and each has a unique flag. From there, the capital city, Bratislava, which has gone by many names in the past, lies in the far west, in its own kraj. It is the only country capital on earth to have its general metropolitan area border two countries, Austria and Hungary. Bratislava is not only the largest city, but also home to the largest and busiest airport, M. R. Stefanik Airport, and Košice, the second largest city, of course has the second busiest airport, Košice International. As a landlocked country, Slovakia's water transport is almost entirely exclusive to the various river systems found in their country. The largest largest and busiest port of course, no shocker, being Bratislava port, located right on the Danube. However, keep in mind, this small plot of land on the other side of the river in Petržalka belongs to Slovakia and not Austria, careening south to the Hungarian border. From there, oh. only two other international ports exist in Komarno and Šturovo, both on the border with Hungary. Slovakia has a very extensive state-owned rail network called the Jet SR, reaching nearly every major town and region. From there, the border is pretty simple, mostly lining up on natural boundaries like rivers or mountains with the occasional anomaly like Velke Slemence, a town inhabited mostly by Hungarians, split between Slovakia and Ukraine, making it a dual split minority ethnic enclave. Fun fact, Slovakia has five tri-points with their neighbors. Now you can find tri-point posts for every single one, even if the border is across the river. Whew, that was quite a bit. Wait, Peter, you're from Bratislava, right? That's yeah, cool. Bratislava is kind of a weird place, man. They have a UFO restaurant on their bridge and a UFO sculpture. I guess we like UFOs a lot. Oh, and see if you can find a sewer worker statue, a car cableway, and if you look Look carefully, see how many hidden war bunkers you can find. The weirdness doesn't stop in Bratislava. In other parts of Slovakia, you can find things like Cage of Shame in Levocha, where annoying people would be put if they're gossips too much. A hotel that looks like this, and they even have a train that goes through a football field for some reason. I hold up, hold up, hold up. 
That's like so much awesome, cool stuff that you're going too fast. Okay. The UFO uh, restaurant, was a restaurant or hotel, whatever it is, uh, that is freaking amazing. And the cars on top of that bridge, like, uh, I'm like, what is the deal with that? <laughs> It'd be so cool to, to have gone to Slovakia and not knowing any of this. And then you just have to just be driving across the bridge and you're just looking up like someone like did the bridge change? Did somebody break down up there and then they, did, they changed the design of the bridge? I don't know, but all this stuff is pretty neat. And look at this hotel gallery. It's a hotel. I thought, I, thought it was, I thought it was going to be a museum. These museums are usually designed really awesome, but that is pretty cool. Where there's the window, okay, there's the windows, and you guys got it going on. Uh, I got to back up a little bit, guys. I'm sorry, but I got to redo that. In other parts of Slovakia, you can find things like Cage of Shame in Levoča, where annoying people would be put if they're gossips too much. A hotel that looks like this, and they even have a train that goes through a football field for some reason. I what? was there for the second episode of my YouTube travel series from Slovakia that shows the most intriguing places of our little big country. Wow, that's like the worst. Okay, that's that train. Is there a purpose for the train? Is it just kind of like, you know, like a ride around the, the soccer park? Or is it actually like go from like place to place and like, you know, kind of like uh, just deliver stuff or just like a, you know, people jump on it, like kind of like a, like a train station. It goes from point A to point B and, you know, people jump on it, whatever. I can't think of the words. But anyways, that's got to be pretty interesting. You're watching a soccer game. Oh, the train's going through, you know, and just do they pause the game for that? Or do they just keep playing while this train goes by? <laughs> it looks like they're all stopped looking at the train. So it seems like uh, it might be a hazard to keep playing if someone just you know, runs for the ball and jumps in front of the train. I don't know. But we're off to a great start here, man. Loving this. Loving this. Worst place to put a train track. I know. Why would they do that? I don't know. Slovakia. Well, speaking of notable <laughs> spots, what are some of the cool sights to see, Peter? Let's see. You have the Stara Bistrica astronomical clock, the Khmarovsky viaduct, Levoča Cathedral with the tallest wooden altar in the world, painted village of Chichmani, and the Warhol Museum of Modern Art, the cool. Klaštorisko ruins, Piešťany Spa, and the most notable sites would have to be one of the many, many historical wooden churches. Or the the over 200 castles and 400 chateaus found in the country, wow. which depending on your definition wow. of a castle, makes Slovakia one of the countries with the highest number of castles per capita in the world. No, no, so Blackie, listen here, Wales has more castles per capita than you do, so we take that title. Quiet Wales, I'm talk, talking about Slovakia right now, and they got a lot of cool castles and a lot of weird stuff, man. So, sorry Wales, I had to put you on pause. <laughs> That's awesome. You guys know I love castles, so wow. Man, this country is awesome. I and mean, you guys must like keep busy like doing a man. I don't know, man. You guys just overwhelming me here because you definitely are up there in like top five, top three, maybe up there to number one as far as cool stuff and stuff I'd want to do there and take pictures of. So you're definitely in the top five area, maybe. Uh, I'd have to like really think about could be the possible number one, but definitely top five. So, anyways, uh, definitely a cool, cool country when it comes to like stuff to see right now. And we're only in the first five minutes, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, put it up. I'm sorry, Wales man. Wales W. It's probably gonna be a long time before I get to see a video of uh, you guys considering alphabetical order and the w's have not been reached yet so but i know i'm going to be looking forward to seeing all your castles but this is slovakia yeah. anyways yeah we're gonna continue Ah, uh, thank you, random Welsh correspondent Duncan. Follow him on Instagram at Curly Good Life. And he hua. Thank you, Peter. Now, Slovakia doesn't just have a bunch of notable buildings and monuments. They also have some sweet nature, which brings us to... So, there's kind of an ongoing joke in Slovakia. I don't know what I like. I don't know what to think about the new graphics, to be honest. The new... Part of my mind, I think they were going into, like, a video game segment or something, and, uh... In a 3D segment, it's, I'm definitely still getting used to this. Don't get me wrong, it's cool, it's just, for some reason, it's just different. 
two. So there's kind of an ongoing joke in Slovakia. It kind of goes like this. On tonight's news, tragedy struck as local authorities discovered a mountain climber who was found dead near the top of Vinitsa Peak. Just, just say it. We already know. Just, come on, man. Come just, on. Identified as Mr. Jakub Novak from Prague. Yeah. <laughs> I just I checked yeah. Dude, dude, dude. I mean, come yeah, on. It's, it's, so, it's, it's terrible. It's mountain typical. Climbing. Yeah, they love their Czech brothers, but Czech isn't exactly known for being the most mountain-savvy country on Earth. <gasps> Which brings us to the motion graphic. Being over 80% mountainous, Slovakia sits on the northern part of what is now the larger chain of mountains known as the Carpathians that swing into a hook all the way to Romania. Within the Slovakia section, there are subsections of mini ranges like the Little Carpathians, the Slovak Central Mountains, the Ore Mountains, the Maple, the Little and Great Fatras, and the Low and High Tatras, the latter of which you can find the tallest peak, Gerlachowski Stit. From these mountains flow many of the mighty rivers, such as the longest one, the Va River, at about 403 kilometers long. Of course, the Danube River is probably considered the most important as it passes through Pratislava and many other important towns along the Hungarian border. Along the Danube is one of only two major flat areas, the Danubian Lowlands and Hills. This is where the highest concentration of people live in the country and where about half of the agriculture is produced. From there, the only other main uninterrupted flat area would be the Eastern Slovak flat by the tri-point with Hungary and Ukraine. Slovakia doesn't really have many large lakes or inland bodies of water, the largest one probably being the Lake Orava Reservoir fed by the Orava River. In fact, the creation of this reservoir inundated several villages, including the famous Slanica, birthplace of this famous guy who standardized the Slovak language. So yeah, kind of sucks for his legacy. In any case, finally, within Slovakia, you can find over 6,000 known caves, like the longest one, the Cave wow. of Liberty, one of the only few rare Argonite caves in the world. It is also a UNESCO heritage site. And to this day, caves are still being discovered and charted. They More love their cool caves. Stuff. So yeah, long story short, Slovakia is definitely a mountain country. Hiking is one of their favorite pastimes. And within these mountains, you can find over 1,300 mineral springs. In fact, Slovakia claims to have more public mineral springs per capita than I'm not too concerned with the, the mineral stuff, but definitely like the mountains, and I, I love to go hiking up there and find some cool stuff and take pictures, So then, and then maybe hopefully not fall into a cave, but definitely cool, and so you guys just add it on to the cool stuff your country has to offer. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry for interrupting your uh, mineral speech. In fact, Slovakia claims to have more public mineral springs per capita than any other country. And they have the second largest reserves of fresh drinking water in Europe after Austria. And hot springs! They have them too. Most famous one being in Pieszczany, which was a favorite spot for Romans. Oh, and we have this unique meadow with thousands of ground squirrels where you can feed them and play with them. Yeah, a lot of strange places in Slovakia. Thank you, Peter! Man, I gotta pause it. It seems like every five seconds now. That it's cool. They're not afraid of you or nothing. They actually just go up to you and you feed them. And it's kind of cool how they kind of like, I guess, trained or like people are not, I guess, eating them. I don't know. Well, there's squirrels, right? No, who would want to eat a squirrel? But, you know, in Slovakia, right? There's a bunch of weird stuff going on. So you never know, right? Just saying. All right, and now is usually the time when Noah comes in, but he's visiting family on the holidays. So how about this? For a Slavic country, why don't we have our favorite resident Slav? It's time for Ivan. Come on in, fill in for Noah. All right. Woohoo! Now, as you can kind of see, Slovakia is huge on nature, but within this nature, there's a lot of resources and industry going on too. Today, Slovakia is one of the only few places on Earth where opal can be mined. And prior to the 20th century, when Australia had an opal boom, Slovakia was the only place in the world where opal was mined. During the second half of the 20th century, yeah. when they were part of Czechoslovakia, Slovakia became heavily industrial. All right, what is opal used for? It's just like, you know, for jewelry, it looks like crystals, you know, kind of thing, is that pretty much it? I've seen opal in video games, so I didn't know what it was. Kind of like, you know, what was the other one that I didn't know what it was, the, uh... anyways, yeah, uh, anyways as they were seen as less of a geographic military threat. Thanks to that move, about 30% of their overall GDP is in industry today. The largest and fastest provider being the automotive industry. Today, Slovakia is the largest car manufacturer per capita in the world. After joining the EU in 2004 and having an easier system of business, companies from Volkswagen, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Kia have opened up manufacturing plants, which, of course, Slovakia was totally down for. I mean, who wouldn't be? In fact, their impressive emerging economic output was so impressive during the early 
2000s, they were nicknamed the Tatra Tiger. Wow. And speaking of tigers, here's Gary Harlow to give you a little rundown on the animal situation going on in Slovakia. Oi, it's me. As a nature haven, Slovakia has a lot going on, especially in one of the nine national parks, most of which are located in the central mountainous parts of the country. Here, a plethora of diverse alpine and carnivorous forest region species can be found like the most common mammals, European bears, foxes, wildcats, and minks. Hunting is completely prohibited within the parks and some species are protected nationwide. There's over 300 beard species like loons, egrets, and storks flying around, probably dropping off babies, as do 17 species of amphibians, the pool frog, the marsh frog, the edible frog, named that way because it's commonly eaten. The edible frog is also a kleptot, which means it reproduces asexually, essentially laying cloned eggs of itself. That's super weird. So remember, <laughs> Slovakia, home of the cloning frogs that you can eat. And that's all for me. Thanks, Not Gary. Surprising. Well, speaking of edible, it's time we end off this segment as we always do. Food! Two words, potatoes and dairy. Specifically sheep dairy. Slovaks love these two things. I mean, they love it. They have everything from potato pancakes, both thick and thin, nice. potato dumplings, mm. and even their national dish is a bunch of potato lumps with sheep cheese and love bacon. This. How does it make you feel love about it. it as a Serb? I definitely would eat it. Cousins, long lost. Ciao, brate. They even have this massive fried cheese thing. Sauerkraut oh and sausage soup soup, garlic soup, and of course the national drink Borovica and Tatra tea, which is a liquor made from tea. Oh, and speaking of drinking, don't forget so the much. Kapurkova. You have to drink the last shot offered to you before you leave a house. It's considered disrespectful if you don't. In fact, uh, we Slovaks have a long history of drinking. Even some of our high-ranking politicians that were recorded drunk in public, Jan Super who literally crashed his car. Oh yeah, and we eat carp on Christmas, but it's like uh, terrible. It has too many bones and has a muddy flavor. People even end up in the hospital for swallowing bones, but we still do it. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Note taken. And speaking of traditions and customs, we are ready to move on to the next segment. The... I'm loving your food, guys. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple man, so I love the simple food potatoes and cheese and meat and whatever it's just all good stuff man Whew. thank you Yvonne Peter how would you describe what it means to be a Slovak we are a very patriotic nation it also means being kind of left out of everything and also being <laughs> very passionate about everything you like but also about everything you hate that has to be said lastly being religious for most of the time and loving strong alcohol. I like that. Thanks, Peter. Oh, by the way, okay. this is a Slovak axe. One of you guys sent it to me for Fan Friday. Forgot who it was, but thank you. In any case, here is the demographics graph. First of all, Slovakia has a population of about 5.5 million people and has a near net zero migration rate. The country is, of course, primarily made up of ethnic Slovaks at somewhere around 82%. The second largest group would be Hungarians living mostly along the southern part of the country at about 8.3%. I mean, at one point in history, much of Slovakia was actually called Upper Hungary. From there, you have the Romani or Roma, estimated at about 2%. And the rest are groups mostly Slavic in origin, like Czechs, Ukrainians, and Rusins, not Russians, Rusins, keep in mind, there is a difference, as well as a few non-Europeans. They use the Euro as their currency, they use the type C and E plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. The official language is, of course, Slovak, yeah. which, by the way, has the longest alphabet in Europe with 46 letters. Long story short, it's basically the same language as Czech. There's like a few small minor differences. Peter, explain. <sighs> This is a tough one to explain. Czech is the only Slavic language Slovaks can perfectly understand. We're used to Czech language in media, movies, etc. since birth, so we kind of learn it subconsciously. Czechs can understand Slovak perfectly too, but they are definitely worse at speaking Slovak, as they're not <laughs> used to Slovak things as much as we're used to Czech things. For example, a blueberry is Chuchorietka in Slovak, but Borówka in Czech. Stork is Bocian in Slovak, but Chap in Czech. While Turtle is Korytnaczka in Slovak, but Želva in Czech. Completely different words. 
Thank you, Peter. <laughs> anyway. All right, so faith-wise, unlike their Czech brothers, most Slovaks do, to whatever degree of devotion, at least nominally identify with being part of a religion or church. About two-thirds claim Catholicism, 4% Greek Byzantine Catholicism. Yeah, that's a thing. Protestants make up about 10%, and the Rusin community is mostly Orthodox, which, okay. going off of that, I think might be a good opportunity to briefly talk about the Rusin people, or sometimes called Ruthenian or Carpatho-Ruthenians. Even though they only make up about 1% of the population, Slovakia has the highest population of Rusins out of any other country in Europe. They are a stateless people group spread mostly across Poland, Slovakia, and Ukraine. They have their own unique language, architecture, traditions, and even flag. If you ever find yourself in Slovakia and have time, check out a Rusin village. It's a refreshing experience, I guess. You'll be like so cultured and enlightened. <laughs> what is my life becoming? Cool people in Slovakia, and one thing all the people love is sports. And with that, here's art with the sports part. Whoa! Nice to see you. It's been a really long time since we've shot geography now. <laughs> Slovakia. Okay, so with this country, there's one sport they absolutely go crazy for, ice hockey. Every Slovak you meet will at some point gloat about the 2002 World Championship that they won against Russia. It was a real huge deal for them. Of course, figure skating has always been- I was going to say it too, I forgot to say it at the beginning of the episode, I knew the guys were really good at ice hockey. You know, definitely give Canada a run for their money been a favorite pastime as well. These two guys won like a lot of awards and I can't pronounce their names at all. Try to pronounce them, Art. How would you pronounce that? Andrej Nepala. Andrej's nipples. Andrej's nipples. <laughs> Andre's nipple. After that, like most countries, soccer or football is the second favorite sport and every Slovak will tell you about the time that they beat Italy in 2010. Finally, they've received 36 medals in the Olympics up to the last one in 2016, not including the times that they were competing under Czechoslovakia or the Austria. <laughs> <laughs> or the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It sucks that the Olympics were canceled in 2020. Am I right? And for some reason, the only event that they excel at the most is canoeing. Yeah, they have like eight gold medals in canoeing for some reason. Wow. Slovakia really rose my boat. No way. It floats my boat. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Yes, Slovaks will surprise you just when you think you got them figured out. Easter comes around and they celebrate like this. Ow! <laughs> Yeah, no joke. And with that, I guess it would probably be appropriate to jump into the Random Hannah culture segment. Here's Random Hannah! Yeah, that tradition? It's supposed to symbolize a woman blossoming into beauty. Okay. Oh, and speaking of beauty, very quickly, guess what? Mm. I'm wearing a shirt with my own face on it, which you can also purchase at geographynow.com. Now into the episode. Anyway, as an industry powerhouse, it's no surprise that Slovaks have quite a few inventions under their belt. This guy had about 20 patents, including one of the first wireless telegraph machines. And this guy supposedly was the real inventor of the modern Modern helicopter. During weddings and special events and festivals, you might spot the traditional folk costume for men and women, known as Croy. The styles vary by region, but usually include white shirts and blouses with patterned multicolored aprons, vests, and head coverings. Hmm. Slovaks have a deep history of folklore and storytelling, one of the most famous legendary heroes being Juraš Janšík. Did I say it right? Good enough. Who is basically the Slovak version of Robin Hood. Today, they have made one movie that received an Oscar in 1966 for the best foreign language film, The Shop on Main Street, depicted a story in World War II. Keep in mind, this was when they were under Czechoslovakia, but the movie was made with a complete Slovak cast and filmed in Slovakia. And finally, we cannot forget the contributions to the visual arts. The most common pottery you will find is likely the Modra style of ceramic, usually white and blue with elaborate floral patterns. Otherwise, since independence in 93, Slovakia has dabbled more and more Hold on. For those of you who've been like basically watching every episode, wasn't that the same uh uh same China or what's it not in Art's cabinet when he did his segment last video? Didn't we have had like the cabinets on and I said, Oh, like, you know, nice China or something? That looks like the exact same uh it makes me want to go back and look, but anyways. Otherwise, since independence in 93, Slovakia has dabbled more and more into the modern contemporary movement. It's not uncommon to find galleries with pieces depicting distorted scenes and still lifes done with aggressive brushstrokes and a hint of surrealism. And speaking Magic of surreal, gallery. here's Keith with his music segment, Buy My Shirt. Whee! 
All right, so you all know the drill here. Look at this. You can wear literally this face on your body. At geographynow.com. Make sure my hair looks I like the geography. So, Slovakia. First off, the old stuff. In Slovakia, bone pipes dating back to my phone going off. Oh, jeez. Ooh, want to make a meaningful connection? <laughs> In Slovakia, <laughs> bone pipes dating back to the early Bronze Age were discovered near the Nitra region and Celts were ruling the area. Today during festivals, Slovakia style bagpipes and jaw harps are commonly played. However, one instrument every Slovak will proudly boast about, the fujar. It's like a super tall wooden bassoon looking thing, very unique to the country and often considered a national symbol. From the 1800s, okay. Slovak music came more Austro-Hungarian influenced composers like this dude became a prominent figure in the romantic genre during this time. Today, the music culture in Slovakia has evolved through many layers of influences from every period of their history and fuses them together. This lady, Marika Gambitova, has like more albums than any other Slovak artist. Today, they have some of the most renowned festivals in Europe, like Bratislava Music Festival uh, and Pieskeni uh, festivals and one of the most well-known in Hoda festivals <laughs> dating back to the 50s. You were just gonna leave that. Finally got to add some metal. Slovakia definitely holds their ground in the metal culture. Here are some really great bands I have found through my findings. List right here. Uh, also, big shout out to our fellow geography peep, Andre from Romania. He sent me this shirt. Uh, I think his band's called Iena. Either way, go check them out. They're cool. Thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, let's quickly summarize the history of Slovakia. There's a lot of stuff. It goes back to the early Bronze and Iron Age. Lots of different peoples and tribes took over, like the Celts. Lots of invasions. Even the Huns got in on it. Then the Slavs came in and Samo's Empire. Great Moravia in the 9th century. The Hungarian Kingdom years. Czechoslovakia established in 1918. World War II, they were kind of a Nazi puppet state. They're not too proud of it. Slovak uprising. Communism years. Velvet Revolution. They peacefully split off from Czechia and they joined the EU. That's basically it. And now here's the part of the episode where we mentioned some of the top notable people from... Oh yeah, I want to say I'm sorry. I, I forgot the whole like... Uh... You know, uh, Soviet Union thing wrong, apparently. I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize there because I probably a whole bunch of mad people. Uh, sorry. Slovakia. There's so many of them. I'm just going to kind of put on a photo montage so you can kind of just uh, maybe take a screenshot and hear some of them. And of course, you, PP Peter, deserve a spot on this section. Let's be real. And with that, let's move on to the final segment the. <laughs> All right, Slovakia and friends. Now, when you're a country that's kind of been subjugated by multiple empires and people groups and been exposed to many different ethnicities, you kind of, you know, build up your repertoire and entourage over the years, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how Slovakia is. For one, Austria and Hungary are like the, hey, hey, oh, don't worry about those empire years you subjugated us under for centuries. We're cool. We're, I mean, we're still keeping our eyes on you, but uh, we're cool these days. But not for real. Today, much of their business goes through these two countries and they get along just fine. Now, for Albania and Romania, they were the only two war Warsaw Pact members that did not participate in the 1968 invasion of Czechoslovakia, which the incident even led Albania to withdrawing from the pact. So there's always- Oh, was I wrong? There wasn't wrong, right? Never mind. I'm sorry. That kind of a uh, thank you for not being a douche towards us attitude when it comes to Albania and Romania. Interestingly enough, Little Liechtenstein had a long-standing dispute over some land that they claim belongs to them in Slovakia. This dispute lasted until 2009 when they finally arranged diplomatic relations. However, some people might still bring up the dispute. Ukraine, Croatia, Serbia, and Poland are the Slav cousins they like to see from time to time and share hearty conversations with. Many Slovaks like to visit Croatia for vacation. And likewise, many people from all of the other countries like to visit the Slovak mountains. Mountains. For Ukraine, Slovakia is like their gateway to the EU, and many come over not just to visit, but study in their universities. Finland kind of sees Slovakia as a good luck charm, as they won the Ice Hockey World Championship twice when it was hosted in Slovakia right. in 2019 and 2011. India, South Korea, Japan, Armenia, Mexico, and the USA are some of the countries outside of Europe that have all had high-profile visits either by heads of state or foreign ministers, and each country has expressed interest in expanding relationships. When it comes to their best friends, however, it's not even a best friend. It's almost a conjoined twin, Czechia, or the Czech mm -hmm. Republic. These yeah. two are as close as two countries can possibly be. They basically speak the same language, they have shared almost every moment of history together, and they just get each other the best. The only difference is that Czechia tends to be more liberal, Slovakia more conservative, Czechia less religious, Slovakia more religious, Czechia drinks more beer, Slovakia drinks more spirits, but otherwise, they are practically joined at the hip. 
In oh. conclusion, Peter, I think you should take this one. What would you say? Slovakia is like Czechia's little sibling everyone keeps forgetting about or mistaking it for its twin Slovenia. It may not be big in size, but it's huge in natural wonders, quirky places slash traditions, and very passionate and generous people. Perhaps the most common connotation with Slovaks I've heard from foreigners is that we're crazy, but in a good way. So remember, crazy, but in a good way. Awesome, Peter. Love that. You rock. Thank you for being in this episode. Check his YouTube channel out. Stay tuned. Slovenia, the not Slovakia country, is coming up next. There we go, Slovakia! Awesome country. Gotta be awesome when your biggest sport is ice hockey, because ice hockey is awesome, and you have all that weird stuff going on, and then the land, and then the people are cool, and they, they know how... To, Basically, every, everyone seems to know how to party and stuff like that. I would just, just like the landscape, the hiking, just there's much just a bunch of cool stuff going on in Slovakia and uh, and uh, of course you know like nowadays everyone's neighbors, everyone's pretty much cool with their neighbors. Well, I guess not everyone. I'm not gonna get into any controversial names here, but yeah, uh, all their neighbors are all cool with them, and yeah, it just seems like a whole big happy family around there. But anyways, guys. Appreciate you guys watching this. Please hit that like and subscribe button below. I'd really appreciate it. And hope you continue the journey with me to for every country in the world. Uh, even after we run out of countries here, I will keep coming back for new for when the news episodes do come out. But yeah, I keep posting for that. Well, we're not even at the end of this, so don't keep posting for that right now. But anyways, 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 uh, you guys have a good day, good night, all that fun stuff, and I'll catch you guys in future videos. I am out of here. Peace.